Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back once again to the motherboards.org YouTube channel. I'm Eric Ferris, your host. Today, we're going to be bringing you the full review of the Gigabyte G1 Killer Gorilla motherboard. We brought you the unboxing of this yesterday. Now, today, we're going to bring you the full review. Now, this board is the third in the series. There's the Assassin, which is the very high end, the Sniper, which is the middle end, and then the Gorilla, which is basically the entry level of these motherboards. This motherboard's at market at about $349, so it's a little bit pricey, but it offers a lot of features. These motherboards are geared towards the high end gamer, the modder, and the enthusiast. Hence all the features, the great way the board looks, the layout, everything is geared for high end and visual aspects. So this board is geared to not only perform well, but it's also made to be shown off and looked at. It's not really a board that's just made to shove inside of a case and you know forget about. This motherboard's geared for people who really wanna show off their stuff. Take a look at the board itself. We can see that it has a lot of unique color features. It's actually kind of based on the NVIDIA color scheme because the green and black, that's a theme that they've been using traditionally for years. You can see it very prevalent here. And the layout of the board, we're gonna check out right here. We see the G1 Killer logo right here. This is actually the cartridge of a gun. There's actually like a fake little bullet that's inside of here. Here's basically the handle of the gun, and then right here is the barrel of the gun. So basically the whole theme up here is to have a hand pistol in hand. Features the X58 chipset, supports the i7 CPU all the way up to the new i7-990X. This is the new super bad boy chipset from Intel. It also features triple channel DDR3 memory up to 24 gigabytes. Has pretty good layout on the board. Everything's pretty separated. Features triple channel SLI and triple channel crossfire all on the same motherboard. They're pretty well spaced apart as well, all 16X slots. We also have two PCIe standard one slots and then a normal old school PCIe slot right here. As far as connecting the motherboard, all that's over here. It's all very well laid out and written so that you can see it. So when you're plugging your cables from that come from your case and your motherboard, you'll be able to very clearly define where they go. Also right here is the front panel connector. This is where that breakout box goes that we showed you in our unboxing video. It plugs into this and then goes into one of the slots on your computer. So actually you've got really great SATA support here all the way across, including the new SATA 6 gigabit. Got your standard 24 pin power connector here and your eight pin over here for your CPU support. Also, the killer E2100. This is one of the great features of the motherboard and that Gigabyte is really pushing. This is embedded technology on the board that Bigfoot Technologies Killer Nick has. This is supposed to be one of the best networking cards that's on the market today and it's actually embedded onto all of the G1 Killer series motherboards. So moving around to the rear I.O., we can see that it has both your legacy PS2 and keyboard slots, along with both the SPD and coaxial for your audio being located right on the same connector. This is also a little bit different than both the Assassin and the Sniper who have separate coaxial and separate SPDIF, which is actually the SPDIF is located on the analog controllers. Now coming right next to that, we have the one touch overclocking button. I'll go ahead and pull the cap off here so you guys can see that. And then we also have two powered eSATA ports. We also have a pair of USB 2.0s, a pair of USB 3.0s, another set of USB 2.0 ports. Then we have your NIC LAN along with all of your analog audio controllers there on the end. So that about wraps it up for the layout of the board. So we've seen how the board performs. All three of these boards perform pretty well. Between performance action between most boards, performance is not gonna be anywhere between more than one and 3%. All the chipsets are the same chipset, so you're just basically, when you're looking at a motherboard these days, you're looking at it about features. Its features and abilities are what really sell a motherboard these days. Now that said, this motherboard comes to market about $349. You may be able to find it cheaper on sale with a coupon, but that's what it is generally at that price range. That said, that might daunt some people 
from buying it. But it does have a lot of great features on board. The E2100 NIC, if you're somebody who does a lot of professional in gaming or somebody who downloads a lot of movies and plays games at the same time, this feature can be very good for you because you can streamline it and put your priority down to four for stuff that you're not wanting to do and put priority one for the stuff that you really want to take care of. So if you're online gaming, but you've got a lot of movies coming in, but you don't want to interrupt your gaming, you can prioritize that stuff. For some people, this will be a big feature. Me personally, I kind of prefer the Sniper motherboard other than this one because I really like the Creative 20K2 chipset, which is actually missing from this motherboard. So for me, I'd say this motherboard, it's pretty good, but I would myself personally prefer to buy the Sniper. For me, out of these three series, the Sniper is the fine point because basically the only difference between all three boards is that the Assassin is extended ATX form factor. It supports both four-way crossfire and the other boards only support three-way. Now that's a big difference. Now beyond that, the other two boards are both standard ATX. They all three have the killer NIC card, but the Assassin and the Sniper have the 20K2 chipset, with the Gorilla only has the Realtek chipset. And to me, honestly, about these series, I think that the Creative Onboard Sound Blaster chipset is much more important than a NIC card. That's just my opinion. Other people out there may have different priorities. So for me, I say this is a pretty cool motherboard, but if I was going to buy one of the series of the G1 Killer, I would buy the Sniper. So that's my advice. You can take it from there and hope to see you guys here on YouTube once again.